it's time to get your armored core on and build some mechs. Of course, I've got you covered, specifically focusing on three strong builds you can put together early on in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. One is a tanky energy weapon powerhouse, another a melee focused burst damage assassin, and an aerial explosive raining specialist. I'll show you how to make the most of each of those, and of course, break down all the parts you'll need. Let's get to it, I'm Alex, and if you happen to be new here, hey, stick around. First, here's a build you can put together in the later half of Chapter 1. This thing's a total meef cake, that's mech beef cake, with high damage and survivability while staying really easy to pilot. I made it to have good mobility and easy energy management, so it's perfect if you're new to Armored Core or if you just want to dominate in the early game. Actually, I use the thing from time to time in the late game too, because it's so effective. Its multi-hitting large area of effect energy attacks make it reliable for scooping up hits even on targets that are rapidly boosting all around. It builds up stagger fairly quickly too, and will evaporate health bars with its DPS. I mean, look at that. Voop! That was my evaporate sound. Now here's all the parts you'll need for this one. Equip the VVC Plasma Rifle in both your left and right arms. Now the VVC Plasma Missile Launcher on both your left and right shoulders. Those four will dish out strong energy explosions that can multi-hit in an area of effect around their impact. You also won't have to worry as much about the ricochet effect with these, which is when a hit is drastically reduced because you use the weapon outside of its effective range. Then you're going to throw on the HD-12 head, which has pretty high armor points and stagger defense, for a headpiece that is. The DFBD-8 core, which has much higher defensive values. It also has a strong generator output adjust stat to improve your energy gauge. Then put on the DFAR-8 arms. Those are nice arms. The DFLG-8 legs, which fall into the bipedal category. These are going to be really easy to control and have a high load limit for all the somewhat heavy parts. The G2P5 FCS, which has very high weapon tracking assist at medium range and decent for a close range. Medium range is probably where you're going to be most of the time with this type of build. The Alula 21E Booster, because it has a very high thrust to make sure you're moving around quickly and it has a fast activating quick boost. The DFGN6 Generator, which has a slightly higher max capacity than your starting generator while also maintaining a quick recharge of that energy gauge. This gives you a good amount of energy to play around with, so you can remain agile while rapidly refilling your energy when you touch back down on the ground. Then in the OS Tuning Shop, if you've done all of Chapter 1's Arena missions, you'll have enough OST chips to invest 2 points in energy weapon output control tuning. That'll increase your outgoing energy damage by 6%, that's all of your weapons. Then you can take something like Assault Armor with your remaining chips. Using Assault Armor right next to someone is a really quick way to inflict stagger or do some extra damage if they already are. Another option, if you want more survivability instead, only invest one point in energy weapon output control tuning. Then you'll have enough to unlock Terminal Armor. This will completely eliminate surprise deaths for you, since it'll save you from death once, shadows die twice style. By the way, this laser beam just quick boost to the side to completely avoid it, don't do it too early. All of those parts together are going to give you a mech with high armor points aka total health at 11,750. Its damage mitigations are also pretty high, so incoming hits are going to hit you for less. Win-win. I really recommend you put this build together in the early game, especially if the end of chapter boss is giving you a hard time, and it can carry you through a lot of missions after that. So quick parts recap. VVC Plasma Rifle in both hands, both VVC Plasma Missile Launchers, the HD Head, the same DF set for the core, arms, and legs, a Lula Booster, G2 PO5 FCS, and the DFGN6 Generator. Next up, creating a fast mobility mech that actually focuses on a melee playstyle, with incredibly high burst damage. This build utilizes two different melee weapons to be able to frequently bash things right in their stupid mech faces. Its other weapons will supplement the melee attacks by providing damage over time during their animations. 
You'll have to be in the later half of Chapter 2 to be able to put this build together, but here's what's in it. The MAT Napalm Bomb Launcher on the right arm, and the PB Pile Bunker in the left arm. This thing gets crazy, I'll show you in a sec. The right shoulder, again I'm using the VVC Plasma Missile Launcher. For this next one, you're going to need to purchase the Weapon Bay Unlock from the OS Tuning Shop. That'll let you equip main arm weapons onto your shoulders, and I'm putting the HI-32 Pulse Blade on that left shoulder. Now you can freely swap between two melee weapons, so you can attack with one while the other recharges, rinse and repeat. And those two ranged weapons are mostly used to supply indirect DPS while you're locked into those melee attack animations. For the head slot, throw on the Nosh 44E, and the lower total weight limit of this build will decide a few of these parts. Then the CC2000 Core, again it's the best option in Chapter 2 for its weight. The ELTA Arms, and those were picked for a very specific reason. It has the highest melee specialization stat you can find at this point, which just flat out increases the outgoing damage of your melee attacks. For the legs, the 42Z Reverse Joint Type are going to make you very agile overall, so you can quickly get into melee range. The ABJ for the booster, and this has a hidden nugget stat we're aiming for as well. This has a very high melee attack thrust stat, which increases the speed of the homing lunge you do when you're using a melee weapon from a distance. The FC6 for the FCS, which has a high close range targeting assist. And the DFGN6 generator because it's still a solid all around energy option in Chapter 2. In the OS tuning shop, at this point you can probably put 2 points into melee weapons drive control tuning to get a 10% damage increase to those melee strikes and direct hit modifier to improve your damage a bit when the enemy is staggered. Combine all of those weapon effects I explained before to provide covering damage before getting locked into those melee attacks to spike up all the hits all at the same time. Also, the Pile Bunker's incredibly short range charge attack is a complete game changer if you learn how to use it right. While an enemy is staggered, the Pile Bunker's charge attack hits with incredibly high damage if you land it. Put that all together and you have a fast melee focus build that packs a punch, ha, huh, with decent survivability. Now here's a quick recap of those parts. The MAT Napalm Bomb Launcher, PB Pile Bunker, the VVC Plasma Missile Launcher, the HI-32 Pulse Blade, the Nosh 44E Head, CC-2000 Core, ELTA Arms, 42Z Legs, APJ Booster, FC-6 FCS, and the DFGN-6 Generator. The final build today is an aerial focus bombardier with a lot of homing rockets and grenades. If you want to remain in the air as long as possible and be able to rain down destruction, this is what it's best at. I aim to make something that could travel a far distance in the air with its hover capabilities while staying fairly agile so it could still easily avoid incoming fire. To put this together, you'll need to be in the later half of Chapter 2 to get all the parts. Put on the HML Missile Launcher and the DF Grenade Launcher in your arm slots. Shoulders, the BML G2 Missile Launcher and Songbirds, which is a grenade cannon. Take the HD-12 Head and the VP-40S Core. This has a higher generator output adjust stat because I'm trying to maximize energy management to keep you in the air for as long as possible. The Nosh 46E arms because they have a very high firearm specialization stat to assist with target tracking. The VP424 legs that are a tetrapod type giving you access to that unflattering hover move. Take the Alula thruster that has a high thrust stat keeping your general movement as quick as we can. The FCS G2 is going to give you decent target assist at pretty much any range, but I mostly picked it because of its missile lock correction and multi-lock correction stats. Those decrease the time it takes for missiles to lock on or target multiples all at once. The VP-20D generator having the highest max energy capacity at this point. All of that gives you tons of energy to use and you can maintain flying around for a pretty long time. In the OS tuning shop, invest as much as you can into explosive weapons fuse control tuning. Here in chapter 2, I was able to get plus 12% outgoing damage on all of those explosive attacks. 
combine all of those, and this turns out to have pretty good survivability, high energy, strong explosive AoEs, and homing missiles. In Chapter 2, this fully armor-plated boss can be a big hurdle, but just staying above it with this build can easily whittle it down while avoiding most of its ground-based attacks. Lucky for us, it has this lovely exposed opening right on the top of the thing. Now a quick parts recap. The HML Missile Launcher, DF Grenade Launcher, BML Missile Launcher, Songbirds, the HD Head, VP Core, Nosh Arms, VP 424 Legs, Alula Booster, FCS G2, and the VP 20D Generator. Enjoy. After a lot of tinkering and using some later game knowledge, those three builds are what I think to be some of the best loadouts you can be using in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. For the tank lovers out there, take the first build and you can throw some treads on it. It works out pretty good. Now time for you to vote. Who wore it best? Number one, the all-around beefcake, aka Meefcake. Number two, the close combat melee assassin. Or three, the golden god aerial nuker. Let me know which one you picked or shoot your own build ideas down below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex and I'll see you again real soon.